I'm going to read some information, not information, some uh, email things that came out from the head office. Some of it is a spiritual mind treatment. Anyway, this one says, a person said, O oh, messenger of Allah, should I tie my camel and trust in Allah? Or should I leave her untied and trust in Allah? The messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, said, tie her and trust in Allah. <laughs> <laughs> From um, Florence Gold Shin, I now exercise my fearless faith in three ways, by thinking, speaking, and acting. I am unmoved by appearances. Therefore, appearances move. And from Ernest Holmes, health starts with the knowledge backed by conviction and belief that there is one life, that life is perfect, and that life is our life right now. In it is the complete and whole pattern of perfection. We accept without reservation that it is the spiritual reality of our being. It is the only source the only cause of every perfect action and function in our body. It alone heals and makes whole, regardless of what the conditions may be. It knows what to do, how to do it, and when to do it. And there's also spiritual mind treatment from Petra Wells from the head office. Actually, I think she's at the ministry of, I forget what state. Anyway, there is a power and presence which is the life behind all creation. It is the divine pattern of wholeness which emanates through all creation. Every tree, flower, cell, and atom is love made manifest, uniquely and joyously being life. Divine intelligence guides, guards, and directs every aspect of creation, manifesting wholeness as each being is already whole itself. Divine intelligence and love is my life and the life of every person. For in oneness, there is no separation. The same life, the same wholeness is my life and is all life right now. And as I know this, accept this as the spiritual and infinite truth of my being. I know this is the truth of every being. I know that each of us is divinely guided to the right and perfect action and spiritual conviction, which results in perfect health. I do not allow fear to be my truth, nor do I let my fear for others rule my expectation of wholeness. I accept only that which is healthy and good for myself and others. I know every person treating this virus, every system, every medicine, every affirmation, and every prayer that is used to heal is guided by the same divine intelligence. It works through all health workers, all procedures and all medicines to bring about a swift end
to the spread of this virus. Each person is guided to the proper physical care and spiritual conviction to stay healthy and rise above the conditions. I stand firm in the belief that only spirit is causal and am grateful to speak the word of wholeness and oneness. I trust in the infinite divine intelligence and the universal law to make the way possible as love he leads each of us into ways of health and wholeness. In this deep gratitude, I release my fear and stand in perfect health, knowing each action I and others take is for the health and wholeness of all sentient beings. And so it is. So it is. So it is. And there's one more from Ernest Holmes. We should read, study, think, and meditate upon these statements which tend to calm, to give poise and confidence, and erase all thought of fear and tension. The subjective law can only operate upon that which is given it, so we must be very careful of our patterns of thought. We should think of ourselves as being surrounded by perfect life and poised in eternal calm. We are in a sea of untroubled waters of life from which we may freely drink. We must do the drinking. No one else can do this for us. We should hold the cup of acceptance until it is filled and overflowing with the manifestations of our desires. This chalice of the heart is held up that the heavenly flow may fill it with God's abundant life. Now I have one more spiritual mind treatment that I absolutely have to read to you because I thought it was so lovely. And this is from Gwen, our, one of our future practitioners. Knowing that God is all there is, we are grounded and steeped in knowing the truth of perfect health, peace, and provision for all beings in this moment right now. Regardless of what we hear in the news, we know the truth that all is well and in divine order. We are grateful for the serenity and strength that are ours now. We declare that divine right action is underway and that all is well. And so it is. So it is. So it is. So it is. I have to talk a little bit about health and expectations. Having experienced quite a bunch of this, and I'm sure probably you've already heard all this before, but bear with me because we have to make sure this is in us now. We have to believe this. And that is when you expect something uh, that's going to happen, you're putting energy into that, allowing it and furthering it and helping it to happen. For me, my example that I know you've all heard and I want to tell you anyway, is when I was doing my chemo and I had to have shots to keep the white blood cells up. And they told me, the nurse was telling me, as she's preparing the syringe, that this is gonna make me sick, that I will feel like I have the flu, that I will have aches and I'll have pains. And for me not to panic, it's not the flu, it's just from the shot. And so my brain, my thinking, and I was fortunately in practitioner training, so I was, my thoughts were much supported by many people. So I'm thinking as she's telling me this, I am not going to expect that. If it happens, it happens. I'll deal with it then. Today, right now, I am not expecting that result. 
and I refused to give it any energy or any further thought. I just immediately dismissed it. It is not mine. I never did get the symptoms. I got a number of shots during the whole thing, and I never did get any of those symptoms. Good. And the other thing, too, uh, we a lot of us have these hidden beliefs like, oh, the flu is going around. Oh, I get the flu. I get it every year. Or, oh, sure, I'll probably get it. I, you know, that that's a common thing. And if you don't realize that you might partly believe in that, then you're giving fuel to that happening for you. And for me, growing up in the 50s, the C word was the big thing. It was like, oh my goodness. My mother and some of her friends would be talking to me about some lady who had the C word. And then pretty soon, that lady was not in the conversation anymore. She had evidently passed. And most of us kids listening to that, I mean, you take it in and you sort of believe, oh, there's something bad about that C word. You don't survive it. It just keeps coming back and coming back and coming back until you pass. And so it was really a scary thing back then. And so then when I get the diagnosis of the C word, it's like, oh, suddenly I had to face that, that belief that it had power. And that's when the, I got a lot of help from all the practitioner studies and teachers and, and classmates, and, and, that, and, and one especially uh, from Reverend Kathleen and also uh, Clancy too. There is no power in cancer cells. The only power is God. There is no power in a flu virus. The only power is God. So these are things that we need to keep in our minds to make sure we are really have our heads in the right place, have our thoughts in the right place, Uncover any of those hidden beliefs you might have about stuff going around, about your vulnerability. Those are not facts. Those are things that you make up. And do not live in the future. Do not live in the past. Live in the present and stay there. If the flu comes to any person here, it comes. Deal with it then. Don't anticipate it and don't expect it. I know during my uh, experience with cancer that everything that happens to us happens because there's some good in it somewhere. And for us to find the good is the critical thing. Even when I had the cancer, I was thinking, okay, there is good in this somewhere. How, how does that relate to me? And so I, my thought process, process went like this. I am created in love to be an ex experience of an expression of love, of spirit. Spirit does not create something to destroy it or to do bad things. Therefore, only my highest good is happening here. No matter what it looks like, only my highest good. So that was my thing to hang on to. And I, I have to say that looking back on it now, which is like seven years ago, it's like my highest good absolutely did happen as a result of that cancer because I was able to clearly understand, embody, and recognize my true self. Not that I stay there all the time, it can be pretty brief, <laughs> but we do what we can. And even as I was um, getting the uh, chemo, one of the things that I would say to myself during the chemo, as this, as other people had said to me, poison, 
is going through my body, destroying, hopefully, the cancer cells, although some other ones, too, probably. As I was getting this chemo, which was like a two or three hour or more experience, I would say this affirmation that Clancy had written, and this is, every cell in my body is vibrating with the energy and vitality of God. I feel so confident and enthusiastic about my well-being. And so I want all of us to know that God is within all of us, revitalizing all of our cells, keeping us healthy, and we can be confident that that is happening, no matter what the appearances are. So release fear, release any expectant ideas, and deal with today. And so it is.